In this lecture, we're going to discuss the law of universal gravitation. So to begin, let's look at the following object, a wallet. And let's place the wallet some distance d below the ground. Well, at this point, my object is said to be stationary. It's not moving. And that means, according to the first law of motion, my object will remain stationary unless a net force acts on my object. So let's see what happens when I release my wallet, my object. Well, if I release it, it will travel downward. But notice that no physical force acts on my object. Nothing actually pulls my object down. No actual hand pulls my object down. It just simply falls downward by itself. And that means that some other invisible force, a force that we can't see with our naked eye, is pulling on our object. And that force is created, this invisible force is created by the Earth. So all objects will fall to the Earth because an invisible force is created by the Earth and it pulls down on our objects. It creates acceleration and these guys, these objects, accelerate downward and gain velocity as they move downward. Now, that means by the third law of motion, every, re every action has a reaction. And that simply means that if the earth pulls down on this wallet, that means this wallet also pulls on the earth with equal but opposite magnitude. So, my two forces are in fact equal but in opposite direction. So, the earth pulls down on my wallet pulling it this way, and the wallet pulls down or pulls my earth upward. And the force or the magnitude of my force is given by the following equation that is known as the law of universal gravitation. This equation states that, <coughs> that in order to find the magnitude of my force, I simply take my gravitational constant g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 meters cubed divided by kilograms per second squared or times second squared, multiplied by mass 1, the mass of my wallet, multiplied by mass 2, the mass of my earth, divided by the distance between their center of masses. Okay. Remember, center of masses is not the same thing as the surface to surface. In other words, let's suppose I have these two masses, spherical masses, that have the same mass and also have uniform mass density. So that means their geometric centers will coincide with their center of gravity or center of mass. And that means my distance r is not the distance from surface to surface, but it's the distance from center of mass to center of mass. So it's this distance r. In order to find this force or this force, because they're equal forces of equal magnitude, I simply uh, plug m1 into m1 here, m2 into m2 here, multiplied by my gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, and divide, by, uh, divide that by the distance r squared and I will get my force that either object feels. Now, once again, any two masses will exert an equal but opposite and it will always be an attractive force on one another. So the magnitude is given by the following formula and the magnitude is directly proportional to our mass and inversely proportional to our distance between them squared. Now, to find the magnitude, we use this formula, but what about our direction? Well, since it's always an attractive force, this force will always be pulled this way, or will always point to the center of mass of that object, and, and likewise, this force will always point to the center of mass of this object. So, they're pointing in the opposite directions. So in order to gain more intuition and to see how this law works, let's look at the following example. Suppose we have two masses, mass 1 and mass 2. And let's suppose mass 2 is twice as heavy as mass 1. So if mass 1 is 100,000 kilograms, then mass 2 is 200,000 kilograms. Now the distance between this center of mass and this center of mass is 1 meter and I want to find my magnitude as well as direction of the force felt by this object and the force felt by it, uh, this object. So I want to find the force 
on this object due to object 1 and the force on object 1 due to object 2. So to find the force, I have to use the following law of universal gravitation. F equals G times M1 times M2 divided by distance between their center of mass squared. So this is simply our constant, so it's 6.67 times 10 to negative 11 uh, meters cubed uh, divided by kilograms times second squared multiplied by mass 1 multiplied by mass 2 divided by distance between them squared. So I plug this in and I find that my force is 1.334 newtons. So the force on object 2 due to object 1 and the force on object 1 due to object 2, their magnitude is exactly the same and it's 1.334 newtons. Now the directions are different. This force points in this direction and this force points in the opposite direction in this direction. So they're attractive forces, so they're point they're pointing in different directions. Now, so we see that no matter what the mass is, they exert the same exact force. And that's because of Newton's third law of motion. So now I want to ask the following question. At what acceleration is this object moving towards this object? And at what acceleration is this object moving towards this object? Because remember, this guy creates a force on this guy and a net force creates acceleration. So I want to find our acceleration of both objects. Note that this object is twice as light as this object. So what is our acceleration of mass 1 and of mass 2? So we basically uh, say, all right, well, force equals mass times acceleration. So now I know my force on both objects and I know my masses so I can solve for my acceleration. So force equals m times a, force is 1.334 newtons equals mass of object 1, 100,000 kilograms times a1. So I bring my mass to this side and I find my acceleration to be 1.334 times 10 to negative 5 meters per second second. Likewise, I say 1.334 equals mass 2 times acceleration 2 and I bring this mass over and I find my acceleration for mass 2 for the heavier mass is less. It's 6.67 times 10 to negative 6 meters per second second. And in fact, it's, it's twice as less. So this heavier object experiences the same exact force as this object does, but this twice as heavy object accelerates with twice as less acceleration and this object accelerates with twice as more acceleration than object number two.